Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. Chrome OS has been getting increasingly more popular, probably because Chromebooks are pretty cheap right now, but also because a lot of people only need a web browser to do their work. The problem is, Chrome OS and Chromebooks are pretty much owned by Google, obviously, and they are tied in into their services and as such aren't very private. So is there an alternative to replace Chrome OS right now on your Chromebook? But that's what we're going to talk about today, right after this message from our sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community that gets you access to thousands of classes to learn a new skill, master a new hobby, or just improve on something that you already know, real-world skills or otherwise. Learning about Linux, for example, is easy thanks to a bunch of courses on improving your skills on the command line, becoming a sysadmin, or just generally learning more about Linux's internals. Personally, I'm taking these classes on color correction in DaVinci Resolve. Skillshare is affordable with free account creation and your access to Skillshare Premium being only $8 a month. This gives you access to all the chapters in all the classes and offline viewing. Now the first thousand subscribers that click the link in the description below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium, so head over there and start learning. Okay, so what is this alternative? Well, it's called Ubuntu Web Remix. It's a Linux distribution based on Ubuntu, but with the specific difference that it isn't based on local installed apps, but more on web applications. And it doesn't use Chromium or Chrome, it uses Firefox, of all things, to do its web app rendering. It's still in beta, obviously, and it's based on Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. Now, where this distribution is interesting, though, is that it ships with its own web store, with its own web app packaging format, which is a super simple script to open a a buttonless web browser window opening the website that you requested, and you can submit uh, the request to upload your own web apps to its web store. Now, Ubuntu Web Remix also uses two interesting services. The first one is Nbox. This is some kind of virtual machine that runs a full version of Android inside of your Linux distro, and that allows you to run any Android app, any APK. Some might work, some might not, but the ones I tried worked really well. And this means that you're basically on par with what Chrome OS offers because Chrome OS allows to run Android apps and Ubuntu Web Remix also allows that. Now, the second thing that Ubuntu Web Remix offers is the integration with the Slash E services. If you don't know what Slash E is, I'll talk about it a little bit more later, but it's basically just some kind of free account that can replace most of the Google services, even though the storage space is very limited. So these are all integrated as web apps. They're based on Nextcloud. And they're here by default on Web Remix, so you have a free online account that you can create or just not use if you don't want to. So is Ubuntu Web Remix able to replace Chrome OS completely? Well, let's dive in into the details. So first is the interface. An interface is based on GNOME. Uh, basically, you have the dash to panel extension with a basic main menu with the activities view and the applications list. You have a favorites list that you can click on to launch your various applications. You can add or remove stuff from that. You have the time and date indicator and the regular normal system indicators that GNOME offers. So basically it looks just like Chrome OS does by default. It's a very simple layout inspired by what Windows has been doing in the past forever years. And it's a simple and easy to understand layout. Pretty simple, nothing specifically complex here. Ubuntu Web Remix doesn't ship with only web apps. It has a few native apps like an archive manager, file manager. And so these apps are themed using the Adapta theme, which kind of gives some kind of older Android look and feel, which isn't bad, even though it's not super modern. And it uses the Papyrus icon theme, which is all right as well, by all means. The GNOME shell itself, though, doesn't seem to be themed at all. You still see the blue borders and the default black uh, look and feel. It's not bad, but it's not very coherent with the rest of the look and feel of the distro. Now, talking about the applications, as I said, Ubuntu Web Remix doesn't ship with only web apps. You also have a few native applications, including a calculator, a file manager, which is Nautilus. You have the scanning tool, you have the system monitor, uh, you have the screenshot tool, and you have a terminal and basically the GNOME system settings because you still need to configure your computer even though you're going to be using web apps. So these are all native GNOME apps running locally. They're not web apps and they are using the latest version of GNOME available for Ubuntu 20.04. For some reason, the distro also includes GNOME boxes, which is a weird choice because why would you want to run virtual machines on Chromebooks? But hey, if that's your thing, that's pre-installed, you can always remove it. 
But speaking of adding and removing applications, GNOME software is not installed by default. You cannot go and just launch GNOME software and try to take a look at the various apps you want. You can install it using the terminal because this distro is based on Ubuntu. You still have access to apt-get and you can download and install any app that is in the Ubuntu repo. But by default, it's not installed. And the distro also doesn't have Snap and Flatpak support by default because it really wants to push you to use web applications. That's the main goal here. Just run a web browser and web apps. They don't want you to run native local installed apps, even though you can if you really want to. So about these web apps, well, the most prominent ones that ship pre-installed with Ubuntu Web Remix are the Slash E online services. If you don't know about it, Slash E is a de-googled Android ROM that you can install on a few specific Android phones and that I've been using daily for a while now. I made a video about it on the channel. I'll revisit it soon. I'll leave a link in the card up top if you want to know more. Basically, those e-services are a Nextcloud account that is created for you, that is totally encrypted, not accessible by the slash e team. It's basically giving you access to a suite of online services, just like Google does. Although, since it's a non-profit foundation, you're only getting one gigabyte of storage, so don't expect to be storing all your photos out there. But you're still getting an email address for free, a contacts directory for free, some file hosting, the calendars, and some photos. So it's still a very handy suite. Of course, opening any of these web apps will just take you to the right tab in the Nextcloud interface. There's nothing really super fancy or super specific there, but it's still nice to have an ability to create an account right off the bat and start using online services that sync with other computers, with other devices. Now, if you don't want to use the slash e online services, you can not use them or you can remove them because as Ubuntu Web Remix ships with its own web app packaging format, it also ships with a small removal tool that you can use. And by default, you can remove all the web services that they included, including the one called eCloud, which is the eCloud online services. This tool will not win any graphical awards. It's not super pretty, but it does the job. You select the app, you click OK, it uninstalls it after you type your password and you're good to go. Now, by default, you also get a web app for mastodon.social, for DTube, and for SoundCloud for access to online videos for uh, your social networking needs, a Twitter alternative in Mastodon, and SoundCloud for music. These are probably here to try and give you an alternative to having native applications to play music, to play video files, or to have social networking. But honestly, they just don't do the trick for me. They might for you. If they don't, there is a web store with a few more alternatives, but we'll talk about that in a moment. So obviously all of these web apps run inside of Firefox because that's the browser that Ubuntu Web Remix is based on. It ships with Firefox 86, so it seems to be well up to date and the browser runs just as well as you'd expect. The only issue here is that Firefox doesn't give you a way to create your own web applications, neither with a packaging format that would be the specific one for Firefox or using the specific packaging format that Ubuntu Web Remix offers. So basically, you're stuck with the things that are available in the web store that Ubuntu Web Remix offers, and you can create your own web apps from Firefox. It is a glaring omission, honestly, because the web store is, for now, pretty much barren, and you can't yet seem to submit your own applications to it. So basically, you can't create more web apps, and you can't install more web apps. So you have a web app-based OS, which can't create web apps. It's, it's a bit stupid. By default, you should have a way to create your own web applications from a website. There should be a tool that does this automatically for you, integrated maybe as an extension in the Firefox browser. It's, it's kind of needed by default. Now, about the web store. Well, it's very clearly an initial implementation. It's just a website loaded in Firefox, but that's probably how it will stay for now. The problem is looks and feels wise, it's super, super simple. You don't have an account, you don't have any way to sync your, your downloaded applications. There's no search and that's not really needed because there's something like eight different applications for now in that web store. There's the few pre-installed apps that you can find already installed on Ubuntu Web Remix and also Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Google Classroom. So for now, the store is completely barren and that's totally understandable and normal. This distribution has just been released a few months ago. The developer seems to be a one-man team. He probably doesn't have that much time to, to dedicate to that project yet. And there doesn't seem to have been any major contributions from people to upload their own WAPP apps to the store. Or at least if there has been, the developer didn't validate them or add them to the store yet. 
So it's a proof of concept that something can exist like that, it can be installed, it can work. The thing is, since you don't have any other way to create your own web apps and you're limited that at what's in the store, well, you're kind of stuck because you need web applications for that system to have a purpose. And for now, you can't really have any web apps at all. Still, the technology side is interesting. The developer made its own packaging format, which is basically a small script that will create a .desktop file that will launch a Firefox browser window without any toolbars and open the website that you wanted. That's basically it. It's super simple. It works well. It's nice. And it should be very easy to create web apps for almost everything. Shouldn't be too complex or too difficult to do. This new packaging format is so simple, it needs to be integrated in a Firefox extension. Let the user just click a button visible by default in the toolbar to create a web app for the website they're visiting. And then maybe try and submit that app to the web store and check if there's already an app using the same URL. If there is, you don't add it. If there isn't, you just submit it for review and then someone can just validate it in one click. So of course, for now, it's a one man project, it's a beta, and as a result, it is super limited, but it's an interesting proof of concept and it could turn into something really nice pretty soon. Okay, now let's talk about Android app support. Ubuntu Web Remix includes Nbox as a way to run Android applications directly inside your Linux distribution. This is a project that exists on the side. It is not a project developed by the distro's maintainer, but it's still a very interesting one because it runs a full version of Android. You can basically install any app that you'd like. So of course, by default, you won't get the Play Store and you won't get the Google Play services. By default, Nbox ships with FDroid on Ubuntu Web Remix, which means you have access to an open source library of Android apps. But if that's not enough for you, you can always divert yourself to try and install the Play services and the Play Store and get access to the whole Android library. Nbox in itself works pretty well. It's actually pretty fast. It doesn't run in virtual machines, so you'll have to install the distribution onto the hardware for it to run correctly. But yeah, it, it ships with the default Android applications, the calculator, the calendar, the clocks app, the settings app, everything like that. And you can then sideload your own apps using ADB, or you can just download, well, use FDroid to download any other app that you might want. It's still pretty unstable at times, it tends to slow down or crash, and I don't think you'll be able to play games on that because it's, yeah, it's gonna be choppy and laggy, but most applications work well. You can't resize them at all, and they display with a default kind of squarish format, which is neither close to a tablet or to a phone screen, so I don't know what's up with that, but yeah, in the end, it's usable and you have an alternative to what Chrome OS offers, which is running a whole library of Android apps directly inside your Linux distro or inside your main desktop OS. It's not bad. It's actually a pretty good thing to have that integrated. The big problem with Nbox is that the Android version that it uses is super old and super insecure. It should have been updated. It should have been updated on that distro. It's, it's just not really great right now to have something so insecure shipping by default. You're going to install apps, use your logins inside of that. That's not great. Okay, so in conclusion, what is Ubuntu Web Remix? Well, it's in theory a perfectly capable Chrome OS replacement. It ticks all the boxes. You've got the web apps, you've got a web store, you've got a web app format, you've got a native interface and some settings to configure, you've got a fast, speedy system based on Linux and on a very simple GNOME layout, and you've got the ability to run Android applications. It's a complete Chrome OS replacement, on paper at least, because as of now, all the components are there, but they don't talk to each other that well. Like the web store doesn't allow you to create your own apps or submit them. The browser doesn't let you create your own web apps. And since the web store is completely empty right now, it's hard to see yourself using it as a daily driver. The Android component is nice, but it's not super well integrated with the desktop, at least not in terms of launching the apps themselves that you've installed. They don't show up in the applications list of GNOME. You have to launch Nbox and then launch the right application that you want. It's not super well integrated. The Android version is pretty old. There's a few hiccups here and there, but it's still a beta. It's the first iteration of that. And you can see we already have all the open source components that we need to create a fully suitable open source replacement to Chrome OS. But yeah, I can see if the project survives and the distribution maintainer is involved and the community gets involved behind that, I could see that project really, really picking up speed and being a very viable alternative.
So in short, is it a replacement for Chrome OS yet? Not exactly, but in the near future it very well could be. Okay, that's it for this video guys, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't stay to like or dislike. You can also subscribe and turn on notifications if you want to see more videos like this one. Don't forget, if you prefer watching your videos somewhere else, I'm also on Library, I'll leave the link in the description below. And if you really want to help support and grow the channel, you can also join my Patreon subscribers and YouTube members and get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!